The first in the country ban on the sale of all vape products will continue for at least another two months after a state judge denied industry appeals to strike down the governor's ban. But the ruling wasn't a total win for the Baker administration, which was forced to formally submit the ban as an emergency regulation in order to continue restricting nicotine vaping products. The governor has argued the product should remain off store shelves in Massachusetts while health officials figure out the cause of vape-related lung illnesses that have sickened more than 1,600 people and killed 34 nationwide. The deaths and the ban come amid what health officials are calling a teen vaping epidemic. So is any of this stopping teens from vaping? Stephanie Lydon visited a local high school to find out. Startling new developments in the vaping emergency. More than 500 cases of lung illness. News that vaping can cause serious lung illness. The first vaping-related death in Massachusetts. And even death may give you pause. But at Danvers High School, seniors Chloe Callahan and Taylor Brett say the warnings about the dangers of vaping have had limited impact. We've had so many talks on it that it kind of, it gets bothersome. The school is using lots of fear tactics um, to kind of scare kids away from it. And I feel like it's just so overused at this point that it's not really helping. And to be clear, they both say there's a problem. So many kids here vape. Callahan did a school project to find out why. Fitting in, like, um, just want to be cool, like my friends are doing it. Over the last couple of years, they've watched as vaping spread to the point where they say most kids at school have tried it. Danvers High is hardly unique. A survey from two years ago found across the state more than 40 percent of high school students had tried vaping. One in five said they're regular users. Today I'm officially declaring a public health emergency in the Commonwealth. The governor cited those statistics a month ago when he ordered a four-month ban on vape product sales amid growing evidence that vaping is making people sick. In order for our medical experts to collect more information, about what is driving these life-threatening vaping-related illnesses. More than the threat of illness or death, the ban may be impacting teen users. I think the ban is an action instead of just words. Since it's so out of reach, it's kind of stopping them. So you're seeing less vaping now? I have, yes. But since vape sales were banned, cigarette sales have gone up at the 30 convenience stores Leo Vercoloni owns in Massachusetts. He says as vaping became more popular over the past couple of years, cigarette sales dropped off. But in the last month, his managers have responded to an increased demand. So where they may have ordered something in the vicinity of 20 or 30 cartons a week, now it's up to 35 cartons. Vercoloni also owns three convenience stores in New Hampshire. And our stores on the border, which is Salem and Nashua, have about tripled. Tripled in vape sales? Tripled in vape sales. Vape customers, he says, tend to be adults who've switched from cigarettes. But you only have to be 18 to buy vape products in New Hampshire. And from Danvers High, the state line is just a 30-minute drive. Kids are turning 18. Everyone knows the upperclassmen. And they'll have them get it for them. Sometimes I don't think that it's not because they don't want to stop. I think it's because they can't stop. Still developing teen brains are particularly susceptible to addiction. And the most popular vape device, Juul, delivers in a single pod as much nicotine as a pack of cigarettes. Stephanie Lydon, WGBH News. But while the state's temporary ban continues, the state judge is ordering public hearings for vape shop owners and others affected, other affected parties to address concerns. While the economic impact on some businesses is clear, the ban's impact on users is still to be determined. It's a concern my next guests have been raising ever since Governor Baker's announcement last month. Shailene Title is a member of the Cannabis Control Commission, arguing the ban will make the vaping problem worse, not better. She's here, by the way, speaking as an individual, not as a commissioner, because the see is Shailene. Thanks for being here. Thank Along you. with Dr. Sharon Levy, she's a pediatrician at Boston Children's Hospital who's in favor of the ban. Good to meet you. So, by the way, we're not here to discuss whether the public health emergency declaration is legal. We're not here to discuss whether it's bad for business. We just want to discuss whether it's good or bad for your health. You support what the governor is doing. Why? 
I, I think it's an important move. Um, it uh, puts out a very clear message to people that there are very real health concerns associated with vaping, um, and it makes these products less accessible, which is what we want to do. Um, we want to help change people's behavior around vaping because we know that it's associated with a lot of harms. I, particularly the hundreds of kids in Massachusetts who start vaping each day, the ban really makes that much tougher. Yeah, but when you, when you hear that store owner, multiple store owners saying cigarette sales are up and my, what did he say, vaping sales across the border, 18 and over, have tripled, it seems that we're just moving the problem north rather than eliminating the problem, aren't we? Uh, so, you know, an important part of the legislation that hasn't been covered as much as the ban itself uh, was the efforts of uh, the governor's office to increase treatment for people who are vaping and want to quit. So well, I assume everybody's in favor of that. Is that not correct? I, I don't think that that's controversial, but it's hardly ever discussed. And it's important because that's what we're hoping people do, that they, go, that they get these medications that are accessible over the counter. For but you can do that without team. a ban, is my point. I mean, you can be against the ban and in favor, as we just saw Shanley nodding in agreement to that, that kind of treatment. Why, are you, uh, why do you have a problem with what the governor is doing? I just think that the ban had unintended consequences. Like what? Well, for one thing, um, driving e-cigarette users back to cigarettes, as we just saw. But in the case of THC, the illicit market is readily available. It has been readily available. And according to the CDC, that's where the most products are linked to illnesses. You know, and that's it, what some of the doctors uh, on this have said. It's not just Shailene Tuttle saying that it's people who do a variation on what you do, saying all this is doing is driving people to the black market, which I would argue, having no expertise, is even more dangerous, you know? Yeah, so, I mean, of course, we're hoping not to hope, hoping to uh, drive people to the black market. The effort here is really to uh, make a very clear statement that these uh, vaping products are dangerous um, and that it's, we don't know what chemicals in the vapes are causing the lung disease, and that uh, there are alternatives for people who want to quit. So that's really what the effort is. Yeah, you, know, you don't know what's causing this. You, don't, you can't say with certainty. So if you don't know, isn't Baker right? Isn't the governor right to say until we figure it out? By the way, he's not. He said to us on our show, everywhere else, this is not a permanent ban. Let's find out what the deal is. Maybe it will become a permanent ban, but let's find out what the cause of these illnesses and deaths are. I mean, isn't that the sane way to approach things? Put a halt after you find out what the reason is, then decide what direction the public policy should go? Well, I think that we can accomplish these things. We can send a clear message. We can give people the tools to stop using these products. We can give them warnings without a ban that sends them back to the illicit market. And I think the benefit of having public deliberation and listening to all stakeholders is we could have foreseen something like the medical cannabis patients and making sure that they have alternatives. I don't think this broad ban where Massachusetts is the only state that has taken such an extreme measure was necessary for these goals. Is there an alternative for that uh, a person who believes they need cannabis to treat whatever illness they have? Well, they have to talk to a medical professional, but... They can uh, take it a different way, can't they? Well, what we're hearing very clearly from patients is smoking is difficult. I mean, these people have, by definition, deliberate debilitating illnesses, yeah, sure. you don't want them smoking necessarily. Edibles can take an hour and a half to two hours for pain relief. Um, dry flower vaping may be a good alternative, and they're not linked to any illnesses, but they're currently included in the ban. Are you worried about that? I mean, for those who have a legitimate need, how do you address that? Yeah, so uh, starting to understand um, with the rest of the professional community that uh, they're uh, it's not just one thing in, in vaping that's causing this illness. There are probably multiple different chemicals that can cause these lung problems. And some of the heavy metals that users get from the vape device itself also cause lung problems. The 1,600 cases that have been reported are really just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, vaping Isn't the CDC saying the rate is declining, actually? So, but we're really talking about the fulminant cases that are being reported. So before this summer, we hadn't really been asking kids who were coming in um, with problems vaping into the substance use disorder program, whether they're having uh, respiratory issues. How about, I am cigarette obsessed, by the way. Having smoked one cigarette in my life, it's something that I, 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 I 
have, I'm almost out of control over. I know a lot of people, a lot of people personally, not just reading the paper, saying thank God for these e-cigarettes, for this vaping, because that's my salvation. Otherwise, and they go on to say, this is killing some few people. Cigarettes, admittedly much slower, are killing tens of thousands of people. So there are just a lot of unknowns with vapes. Uh, what we're learning from the pulmonologists is that there are actually uh, evidence of long-term harms. Vapes haven't really been around long enough for us to know what they will do to people's lungs down the road. But we're seeing what I would call subclinical consequences in, in children that, that healthy adolescents tolerate. But when we ask about it, we find that kids are developing things like chronic cough related to vaping or shortness of breath. And so there's really more going on that's being, than is being reported to the CDC. And the, the other thing that's really important here is the manufacturers of e-cigarettes were never asked to prove that their products were indeed mm -hmm. safer than tobacco cigarettes. It was just assumed that nothing could be worse. Well, they're not going to be asked at the end of this two months uh, either, are I mean, they? That's a, but that's a real problem. So you said you don't deny the concerns she has. You of just don't not. think I a ban. Of course you do. So, but I mean, of course you do, meaning I've heard <laughs> you do it. But so what is the solution short of a ban here? Just public education? Is that, I well, mean, cigarette smoking, for example, in the 90s, what began to bring the use down, what, yeah, there were, uh, there were ads, but there was a huge tax that was passed by the voters. All that money was dedicated. I don't know of any fund that's being dedicated to public education around vaping. So how do you get from here to there if the ban is not the appropriate interim step? Well, I think you both make a great point, which is that a ban is a very small piece of this. We also need public health interventions, just like we saw with smoking, just like with that young person who said, I see right through the fear tactics. She needs real information. But she said it's diminishing use. You heard her say that, too. Didn't I did you? hear her say that, too. I think we need a strong regulatory structure. And there's been a lot of complaints that the CCC has been slow to start up. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that was making sure that we have procedures in place that if in the unlikely event that it's shown that a regulated product is causing these illnesses. We have quarantines, recalls, bans. We can, like Colorado has done, ban specific additives and ingredients. That's the whole point of regulation. Fair enough. To be continued. Doctor, good to meet you. Thanks so much for your Thank time, Shailene Title. Really appreciate it as always. Good to see you both.